Hey guys, this is Dan with Gears and Gadgets. Thanks for tuning in. So I'm coming to you guys with another Ruroc video and I'm gonna get this out of the way. First and foremost, this is not, Dan is now a Ruroc writer, none of that. What this is, is a follow-up video to the video that I did where I cut this Ruroc Atlas 3.0 in half. <laughs> and when I first opened the helmet, what I said was- That cheek pad is garbage. <laughs> And I meant it. Now I've been at this YouTube thing for five or six years now. And one thing I will say, and I've seen it a lot, I've been guilty of it, is making a statement on a product and then somehow feeling like you forever need to defend that statement. I've tried to back away from that in the last couple of years. I've done it with Harley Davidson where I've critiqued some parts and pieces of the brand and then they make changes and I come back to actually say, hey, I, I think it's a worthy note to mention the changes of the thing that I was critical of to begin with. That is what's happening here with Ruroc. Now, after I published that video of me cutting this Ruroc Atlas 3.0 in half and comparing it to a uh, Shoei RF 1200, Dan Reese, the CEO of Ruroc, did reach out to me and we did have some pretty spirited conversation. It was respectful, but I did not back down from any of the assessments that I made of the helmet that I purchased. Now, in those conversations that I had with Dan Reese, it was very heavily revolved around the cheek pads. Now, that was where we started having conversations about the new cheek pad, and this is kind of a spoiler alert. You'll see this later on in the video. This is a new cheek pad that Ruroc has that I did cut for this video. It is worth noting that this significantly, and I'm talking about like completely changes the dynamic of the helmet. Again, we'll get into that down the road. I just wanted to address why I made this video. And again, this all comes down to people, the humanity of it all. I mentioned that these brands, they have people that rely on the the actual products and the company to do well. And I respected that. So should I just constantly forever kind of die on that hill of where I stood with the product a month ago when they made changes? I don't think so. Ruroc did send me this new Atlas 3.0 to make this video. As much as it's sponsored because they sent me this, I am not going to be wearing this helmet going forward. You're not seeing links in the description down below. I still love my Shoei RF 1400. This is more talking about, did this catch up to that with that new cheek pad? And when it came down to, could I just buy another $500 helmet? I'm still about a grand upside down on the original video that I made cutting these helmets apart. And no, I can't afford to just keep burning $500 on helmets. I don't have it like that. So um, I did have to accept that. So take that for what it's worth. But I do wanna make this video and talk about the new cheek pads because this is a big deal. To anybody who went out and spent money on this Ruroc Atlas 3.0. What I wanna talk about is that you can get these new cheek pads. They're on their website. I did verify as of today. It's $25 for the new cheek pad, which is a thicker, more robust version of their pads. And I was also told that Ruroc sent out 50% off coupons to customers who had bought the Atlas 3.0 previously. And I will also go further to say, I never would have ridden with this helmet that I cut apart with the cheek pads the way that it was. But with the new helmet, with the new cheek pads, I would ride with it. I'm not going to, but I would. And I wouldn't tell somebody, whereas before I would say, don't buy. Now I would say, eh, you know what? I wouldn't tell you not to buy it. So keep that in mind. This does require an additional purchase for this cheek pad. They are not selling the Ruroc Atlas 3.0 with this from the factory. You would have to pay for this separate and I would recommend it. There will be another liner upgrade, and apparently this is going to be a complete liner upgrade uh, in February that will fit the 3.0. That's something I'm actually looking forward to seeing the difference between what I got originally, what I got now with this thicker cheek pad, and then what comes out down the road in this liner upgrade. I don't know anything else about it other than the fact it is coming. So let's go ahead, get behind the table, get this helmet unboxed, which it's already unboxed. I wanted to make sure that I recorded that and cut the pad and really kind of had a good intro to this video because this liner and our cheek pad is really what this video is all about. So let's go ahead and get it opened up. Instructions. And this is the new Atlas 3.0 that Ruroc did send to me. Now Ruroc also did send me out the shockwave, not really the main part of this video, but we'll open it up. Here is the Shockwave unit. Speakers, USB-C charging cable. 
and some instructions. So we'll set that off to the side for now. Now the main point of contention that I had with the first brew rock that I ordered and paid for myself was that when I opened it up, the first point, touch point you have is the cheek pads. It's pretty common for me when I buy a new helmet to kind of flip it over and the first thing you do is kind of grab at those cheek pads. Now these are the new, more robust cheek pads, so we'll kind of give those a test and see how it all feels. So they did send me a cheek pad to actually cut, which I'm going to do on camera. So this is the new liner that came out of the helmet they just sent me. It does appear to be the identical liner. I don't see any differences in the foam. So this seems to be the same liner that came in the original that I had ordered. Let's make sure I put this back together so I don't cut into uh, the wrong cheek pad and end up having a helmet with uh, two right side cheek pads. So let's cut this one open. Here you can see this is the cheek pad from the first video. This is what I was very critical of was the quality of foam just kind of being one piece of foam and they're not being very comfortable. Let's see what's in the new one. Tell me that this is not a much better pad than this one here in terms of fullness on your face. This is what I expect to see out of a, you know, pushing $500 helmet. We'll pull this out. Old foam, new foam. Significant difference. This is what you need in that helmet. That's my uh, opinion. I mean, it's amazing what difference this does than this. Just has much more spring back, which pushes back on your cheek than obviously this. I mean, huge difference. So let's go ahead and put this thing back together, take it out on the road and let you guys know what I think about it with the new cheek pads. It's Let's take her for a ride. All right, so out here on the road, I can tell you that this thing fits much nicer than the last one did. Uh, again, that last one I had was an extra large. This one is a large. And I know a lot of people are gonna say, and they have said that I ordered the wrong size, but I was between sizes and I was right at that extra large size. So that's why I went that way originally. I also don't know if a lot of people that were making those comments about sizing seem to hang up on that didn't realize that I didn't really care so much about the fitment because I intended on cutting it anyways. But this one being a large fits uh, much nicer. And I also think that if I had these thicker cheek pads in the extra large, that it actually would have been just fine. These are almost too tight, I want to say, but it, it's okay. I mean, the, the fitment's probably right. Definitely a little bit quieter, and, and I think it has to do with the pads being a little bit thicker. Uh, probably have a little bit more muffling ability to them, but uh, don't get it twisted. This is still a, a loud helmet. You know, it's amazing, but also not surprising how just uh, the change of that cheek pad, filling it out, can make that much more of a difference. So with that being said, let me go ahead and throw this back to the studio. Okay, so what do I think about this new Atlas 3.0? It's not really new, it's just the Atlas 3.0 with the new liner. It's pretty good. I mean, it goes back to the conversation I had when I cut this one originally, which basically I would have told you don't buy it because I thought that the cheek pads were just very inferior. These parts are kind of falling out of it. Uh, but the new one it, with the new cheek pads, if you're willing to spend the money on that upgrade, I think it's very much worth it. It's back to the point of, I think all of the materials are good. I think the workmanship is is really where it needs to be. I think, you know, the visor comes up and down and it's it's all solid. I'm still gonna ride with my Shoei RF 1400. And really the only reasons, well, number one, it's still a brand new helmet. I just got this in a couple months ago, but it's also quieter. It has the closing vents, open and closing vents, which I personally like. Um, and I still think the liner is better. It's just, I guess, more, marginal now I, I would say that the Rurock closes the gap significantly i'm talking very significantly with this new cheek pad so that's kind of where i'm at with this uh it's again not really a sponsored video just me making an update that i thought was worthy of talking about when uh, dan reese reached out to me and said hey you know this is something that's worthy of conversation would you want to show it on your channel 
sure. You know, I have no problem doing that. So that is my take on the Rurock Atlas 3.0. Again, no links in any descriptions. I'm not here to make any money off of any affiliate sales by no means on this Rurock. So go to their website, I guess, and find it yourself. <laughs> that's kind of where I'm at with it. And that's it. That's my update on the Rurock Atlas 3.0. Thank you very much for tuning in. If this is your first time tuning in, please hit that subscribe button down below. Remember, likes go a long way to help support the channel. I'll see you guys next time.